Dear students, welcome to a new video for the Pure Mathematics course. Here we will begin chapter 1, which is the equations and inequalities. In chapter 1, we divide it into six subsections, which are linear equations, quadratic equations, multiplication loop equations, linear inequalities, and 0.5 is the uh, applications of inequalities, and finally, the absolute value. Let's begin with the first part, which is the linear equations. What is the definition of the equation? An equation is a statement that have two expressions are equal. The two expressions that make up an equation are called its types, and they are separated by the equality sign, which is this sign, equal. For example, the forms of the equations may be x plus 2 is equal to 3 or x squared plus 3x plus 2 equal to 0 or a fraction like this y over y minus 4 equal to 6 or it may be in this form w equal to 7 minus z. So they are all an examples of the equations. But you should know that what x, y, w, any simple is a variable. A variable is a simple that can be replaced by an answer. What we uh, will do when we want to make the equations granting the equivalence. For the equivalent equations, two equations are side set to be equivalent if they are exactly the same solutions. There are three operations that are guaranteed the equivalence. Number one, adding and subtracting the same polynomials to or from both sides of equations. We should note that if we add or subtract any polynomial from one side, we should again add and subtract the same value from the other side. Mul number two, multiplying or dividing both sides of an equation by the same non-zero constant. When we multiply or divide in one side a non-zero constant, we should do the same operation to the other side. The third one that we, that guarantees the equivalence is if we replacing either side by an equation by an equal expression, such as, however, there are operations that may not produce equivalent equations, such as multiplying both sides of an equation by an expression involving the variable, or dividing both sides of an equation by an expression involving the variables, or spreading both equations of an equation to equal powers. So, these three points may not produce equivalent equations, particularly when you begin to solve the equations. Let's take the expression linear equations. A linear equation is in the variable x can be written in this form. So it is a standard form for the linear equation. ax plus p equal to zero and a not equal to zero. Where a and p are constants so we will take this a uh, linear equation standard form and call this maybe first degree equation or an equation with degree one. So if we can have this form, it may be called a linear equation, an equation with degree one or first degree equations. Let's take an example to solve a linear equation. Solve this value. 5x minus 6 equal to 3x. If we have this equation, we will subtract 3x from both sides to get rid of the uh, 3x here in the right side. So the result will be 2x minus 6 equal to 0. Then we will add plus 6 to the both sides to get rid of the 6 from the the left hand side to get 2x equal to 6. Then we will divide both sides by 2. When we divide both sides by 2, we will get x equal 3, and this is the solution for the equation. 
So if you want, you want to solve any equation, you will do all the steps to get x in the left-hand side alone without any number added or divided or multiplied or subtracted from it and the, all the other value in the right-hand form, which is the solution for the Let's take another example. If we have this value, this equation, and we want to get the value for the variable or the unknown value x. So we will get rid of all the numbers and take x uh, to the, the left-hand side alone and the number in the right-hand side. The first step, we will get rid of the numbers in the denominator by multiplying both sides by 4. So we will multiply here 4 and here 4 to guarantee equivalence. And this will get the, this value. We will get rid of 2 in the denominator by 4 divided by 2 equal to 2 and 4 divided by 4 equal to 1. Then when we multiply 4 by 6 equal to 24. You will then strip the property to simplify this value to get 5x plus 14 equal to 24. This simplification we take already in chapter 0. Okay, let's now get rid of plus 14 by adding negative 14 to both sides so that 5x will equal to 10. Here, we will divide both sides by 5 to get the value for x, which is equal to 2. This is the solution for the value. Okay, let's move to another example. But, but it now have no numbers, which is called the literal equations. The literal equations, equations where constants are not specified, but are presented as a, P, C, and D. So we have only symbols and not we ha don't we have any numbers. This is called the literal equations. The letters are called literal constants. So P concentrated only on the value that we solve for. If we said that we want to solve for X, so we will get X to Z left hand side and the all other values or numbers or letters in the right hand side so if we will solve this for the for x when we solving this for x we will use the descriptive property to take here x times a equal to ax x times c equal to cx and plus x square will be x Square. Here in the left hand side, x square plus the first times the second by 2 will be 2ax and plus a square. Taking here all x's in the right hand, uh, left hand side, and all other numbers or literal constants to the right hand side. So x will be eliminated by x square, and we will get a x uh, as a common factor and inside the bracket after getting this by negative value equal to c minus a. So we want to get rid of c minus a. So we will divide both sides by c minus g a minus a. So if we divide both sides by c minus a, the value for x will be a square over c minus a and this is the solution in this case for c minus a. Now if we have a fractional equations, a fractional equation is an equation in which the unknown is in the denominator. So no numbers. This is different from the the example that have the and numbers in the denominator. The, here we have the unknown in the denominator that we want to get rid of. So we can simply, simply multiplying 6, 6 by x minus 4 and get it 
in the right hand side and five times x minus three and get in the left hand side and use the destructive property to get all five x here five x minus five times three equal to 15 equal to six x minus six times four equal to 24. now we get all the x's in the left hand side and all the numbers in the right hand side so 5x plus 5x minus 6x equal to 15 minus 24. So here if we take the body so minus x equal to minus 9 or negative 9 so positive x equal to 9 and this is the value for x sorry for all these lines that may be here now it's very clear okay so x equal to 9. let's move to another example but for how to solve a radical equation the radical equations is one that the unknown occurs in a radicon in a radicand so we have cases that are known in the denominator so it will be a fractional case or fractional equations the radical equation the unknown is in the radicand let's solve this equation root y minus 3 minus root y equal to negative 3 okay let's move the root y with into the right hand side by adding plus root y to both sides to get y root y minus 3 equal to positive root y plus 3 ne positive root y minus 3 positive root y minus 3 then we squaring of both sides if we write here root y minus 3 equal to positive root y minus 3 then squaring both sides then you will squaring both sides why we square both sides to get rid of the radical sign so if we square this side so this will be y minus 3 if we square the side this will be the first square minus 3 times 2 times root y which is equal to negative 6 root y plus the second term square which is 3 square equal to 9. now let's get rid of the y with y and the 6 root y will add it to the both side to get 6 root y equal to 12. now we will divide both sides by 6. when we divide by 6 we get root y equal to 2 but we want to get the value of y only not the value of the root y so in this case we will take the squaring for the both sides square root y equal to y and squaring four equal to four now let's move to the second section in chapter one which is the quadratic equations a quadratic equation in the variable x is an equation that can be written in the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero a not equal to zero where n p and c are constants the quadratic equations can also called a second degree equation or equation with degree two so note that the greatest power here in the quadratic equation is equal to two and have two solutions for the quadratic equation a p now let's solve if we have x squared plus x minus 12 equal to 0, we can function it into two brackets, which is r multiplied by each other, 2p x minus 3 times x plus 4 equal to 0. Okay, now when we the product of two quantities or more is 0, this means that at least one of these constants, one of these these quantities 
should be zero. So negative uh, x minus negative three or x minus three may be equal zero or x plus four equal to zero. Again, we have two values of uh, or two products or more quantities uh, multiplied by each other. So if uh, and the equal, equal sign equals zero. So at least one of the quantities must equal to zero. Let's spot x may be in the first case x minus three equals zero, so x may be three, or x plus four equal to zero, so may x equal negative four. Another quadratic formula point correcting. If we have x that is four equal to five that we will take the same steps when we solve the equations, where we will get all the w to the and the unknown simple or variables that we want to solve for in the left hand side and the numbers in the right hand side. So adding negative value to the neg negative five w to the both sides, we get we get here six w squared minus five w equal to zero. And now take w as a common factor, we get six w minus five. Here and the value will equal to zero. We have two quantities multiplied by each other. This means that maybe w equals zero or six w minus five equal to zero. If six is by w minus five equal to zero, then w will be five over six. Let's take another high degree equations by factoring. 4x minus 4x to the power 3 equals to 0. Here we will take a common factor 4x and get inside the brackets 1 minus x square equal to 0. Here 4x will be multiplied by 1 minus x times 1 plus x and 0 is the same. Here we have three products equal to 0. 4x may be equal to 0. When 4x equal to 0, then x will be 0. When 1 minus x equal to 0, so x equal to 1. When 1 plus x equal to 0, here x will be negative 1. So we have three solutions for x. Let's take another example. If we have x times x plus 2 all squared times x plus 5 and x plus x times x plus 2 to the power 3 equal to 0. Now we will take we will take a common factor x times x square x plus 2 square. If we have from the first term x times x plus 2 square as a common factor, we will remain only x plus 5. And for the second term, if we have x times x plus 2 squared, they will remain here x plus 2. So we will add which inside the brackets. We will get the common factor here the same. Occur. This is a common factor here the same, but we will simplify which inside the brackets. x plus x equal 2, 2x. It occurs as a plus sign, not multiplied equal 2x and 5 plus 2 equal to 7. So we have three terms which are x here may be equal to 0, x plus 2 square may be equal to 0, or 2x plus 7 equal to 0. Now the results will be if x equal to 0 and x plus 2 square equal to 0, this means that x will be equal to to negative 2 and if x plus 2 x plus 7 equal to 0 and x will be negative 2 2 over 7 okay let's move to another example the solution by factoring solve x square equal to 3 
and find the value for x. Now we will turn this equation after adding negative 3 to the both sides to two brackets product prime. And we will apply the rules that we already take in the chapter view to get two brackets have the same values except for the sign. This will be x squared negative 3 will be x minus root 3 times x plus root 3. Here we will can say that if x negative uh, minus root 3 equals to 0, the x value will be root 3. And if it were x plus 3 uh, root 3 equal to 0, the x value will be negative root 3. Now let's move to another topic, which is solution by completing the square. This method is based on the process of writing the quadratic equations a square ax square plus px plus c equal to zero. In the form x plus m square equal to capital N, where n and n are two constants. Solving completing the square the following values. Here number a a square plus 2x minus 8 equal to 0. We will put this value in the form x plus m square. We can get it by x square plus 2x will be here 8 in the other side to be 8. Now let's put 8 will equal to 9 minus 1. So the this value to, to get it as a completing completing square form will be x square plus 2x plus 1. From where we get to 10 1 because here in the right hand side there will is there is 8 where 9 minus 1 equal to 8. And here we will get negative 1 in the left hand side by this is to get it in the form for the completing squares. Now it's ready to take in the form x plus 1 all square equal to 9. This means here this we use the, the rule for completing square to solve the quadratic equations. If x plus 1 square equal to 9, so we will take the square root for both sides. We take a root for square root for this side and take the root for the side. Here, root x plus 1 square will be x plus 1 and which is equal to plus or minus root 9. So we have the values for if x, uh, x equal to plus root, no, root 9 plus 1 or root uh, 9, uh, negative root 9, negative, uh, negative 1. So the value for x will be negative 4 or 2, because root 9 is equal to 3. Again, I mean that x equal to, plus one, x plus 1 equal to plus or minus 3, because root 9 is equal to 3. Here, if x in the left hand side alone, then mean the right hand side will be plus or minus 3, plus or minus, here x will be plus or minus 3, minus 1. So the value of x will take two values. x may be equal to negative 4, or x will be a positive 2. Now we will move to the quadratic formula equation. The roots of the quadratic equations are given as x equal to negative p plus or minus root b squared minus a times 4 times c over 2a. We should note that a is the coefficient for the x squared and b is the coefficient for the x. And k is the third term which is constant and not multiplied by the unknown variable. Now take an example for solving with using the quadratic equations on the real root. 
by this value for x squared minus 17, x plus 15 equal to 0. Now, if we lock in the value for a will be equal to 4, which is the coefficient of x squared, and the value for p here a equal to 4, and value for p equal to 17. Negative 17. Negative 17. It's very important to take it with the sign. Negative sign. Negative 17. And p equal to 15. Now, it's very easy. You have a quadratic formula and just substitute the values for a, p, and c inside the quadratic formula. To get, this is the minus for the rule and the value negative 17, the value for p plus or minus negative 17 square minus 4 for the, for the rule, 4 for the value of a in our example, and times 15 with the value of c over. 2 for the rule and for the value for a in our rule. So, in our solution, in our example, sorry. Okay, and now just use your calculator to take the all calculations, begin with the values that inside the rule and simplify it step by step. Take care of your signs and your numbers to get the right answer directly. So we finally will have two values for x that x equal to 24 over 8 or x equal to 5 over 4. So these are the two roots for x. Here we end our lecture for the linear equations and the quadratic equations and we will begin the next video for the inequalities. Thank you for listening.